Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a DAO factory within the uh, DAO data access object pattern, design pattern. Since the last tutorial, what I've done is um, I've taken this person DAO that we created in a previous tutorial and I've filled in just some SQL so that it actually works. And we've got create, retrieve, update, and delete methods for dealing with these person objects and getting them into and out of our database. I've also, um, in, in my database here, I've got, a, um, I've got a log table as well as a people table. So I've also created a log DAO.java that would deal with the log table, except I haven't implemented it because uh, that will be getting off the track a bit and I'm much too lazy. But basically, just, just to demonstrate this idea, we've got a couple of DAOs now, um, and I haven't, in, in a log DAO, we probably wouldn't even need update and delete methods because this is just supposed to add entries to a, a log table and get the entries. So it's a pretty simple DAO. But we've got the log DAO that deals with the log table and the um, person DAO that deals with the person table now. And uh, to organize this a bit more, and, and the um, DAO pattern uh, is, it can be a bit like a pyramid with multiple layers, some of, some of which you may not have. But the next layer now, if you wanted to add a new layer, would be to create a, um, a factory that can actually create these DA DAO objects for us. And we could call that, let's say, DAO factory. So I'm going to right click my model package here and create a new class and I'm going to call it DAO factory. Click finish. And this uh, is, is really simple. It's going to have a method public person DAO get person DAO. And that's just going to return a new person DAO. And similarly, we can have a public um, log DAO get log DAO and that's just going to return a new return new log DAO and then when we actually use these objects let's find some code in the model here that actually uses this and it's um, it's a while since I worked on this so oh yeah at, at the moment what I've done is I've got the controller using these DAO objects so uh, now, instead of, the, instead of the code that works with a person DAO, for example, doing new person DAO, this code can then do DAO factory dot get person DAO. Something I've forgotten actually, which is that these methods have to be static. So let's let's make them static because I want to call them via the class name. Um, so DAO factory has static methods that just create and return the DAO objects. And then in the controller, we can say DAO factory get person DAO, for example. Now, at the moment, I'm, um, I've got a class called model that I started off with, but I'm not actually using it. And I, I am going to go on to use that class in a future tutorial in this series. But um, I just want to point out that a lot of a lot of this depends upon what you actually need to do, and a lot of programs wouldn't have a class called model. Or if they did, it would be some specific model, and they might even have multiple model classes. Um, so they might have none, and they might have multiple ones, or somewhere in between, they could have one. And uh, the, the important thing really is to think of the model as, as a package, not a particular class. And here, in the controller, the controller uses the model. So the controller is going to use classes from this model package. It's not necessarily the case that the controller is just going to work with this model class, which at the moment doesn't do anything, and that will use these other classes within the package. It doesn't work like that. The Or it, well, it could do if you wanted it to, but uh, the way I see it, at least, that uh, the model is a whole package here, not just one class and the controller could use any of the classes from the model. And it's the same for the view. Um, if you're 
if you've decided that you're going to let the, mo- the view get information from the model without going through the controller, which is a legitimate decision to make, then uh, the, the view could potentially use any of the classes in the model package, not just one. So the different bits of the application, model, view, and controller, each of them are not normally one class. They're, they're more like a package, which may even have sub-packages containing lots of classes. That's it for this tutorial. And what we're going to do next is, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use JUnit really bl- briefly, just because I, uh, I would feel very uneasy writing database code, like the stuff in Person DAO. And I have, I've written some functional code here, which you'll be able to find uh, via caveofprogramming.com, if you want uh, an example of JDBC code. And I, I wouldn't want to write code like this without testing it, even, even in this demo program, because I don't want to give you uh, JDBC code that doesn't work. So in the next tutorial, even though it doesn't necessarily fit all that well into the theme of this course, I'm going to show you how to use JUnit, which um, a lot of people have asked me about, and I, f- I figure this is a good place to demonstrate it. And then we're probably going to go on to looking at extending the DAO pattern further and adding a kind of new tier to the pyramid that can work with multiple databases. So that's it for this time. And um, until next time, happy coding.